In this lesson for Algebra 1, we're going to take a basic, open, introduction look at equations. And when we talk about equations, what we're talking about are two mathematical expressions, either algebraic or numerical, that are connected by an equal sign. Now, with these two expressions, and that could simply be item equals another item, so 4 equals 4, something as simple as that. This is an equation. We have three different types. We have true, false, or what are called open equations. So as we go through and look at what we have on the screen, let's examine each of these individually. So we have first, looking at 17 plus 5 equals 12 plus 10. And in order to see if this works, we need to simplify it down. So on the left, 17 plus 5 equals 22. And on the right, we have 12 plus 10, which also equals 22. Once we simplify the two expressions, we see that they are equal to each other. So this is what we would constitute as a true equation. Our second one, 16 plus 2x equals 40, because we have the presence of a variable inside of this equation, this is what's called an open equation. Depending on the value for x that is assumed, we have either a true or a false equation. But because we don't have that given value for x, this is open until more information comes along. Our third equation, located here, 6 minus 74 equals 12 plus 3. Well, simplifying the sides, 6 minus 74 is a negative 68. 12 plus 3 is 15. This is not the case, so we would constitute, constitute this as being a false equation. And last, we look at not 3y plus 9 equals 5y minus 13. Again, we do have the presence of variables in this equation. So once again, we have open status for this equation. So true numerical equation that both sides are equal to one another. False numerical equation where both expressions are not equal or open any numerical or sorry any algebraic equation that contains variables. So what can we do when we have equations as such such as these open ones? This is when we start talking about the solution to an equation. A solution to an open equation is the value for the variable that makes the equation true. So here I have two different equations with an assumed value for our variable given on each one. So where are we going to start? Well, once you have a variable for your equation, you substitute it in and then simplify. Whenever I substitute a value for a variable into an equation, for instance here p equals 5, Every location that I see the variable p, I'm going to replace it with a 5. And to help remind me what I'm doing, I always place my variable inside of parentheses. Whether I'm adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, this simply lets me know, as a quick visual check, exactly what was substituted. So simplifying this down now, 7 times 5 is 35 minus 4 is supposed to equal 39. And I'm going to put a little question mark here because we're checking that. And 35 minus 4 is 31. And we can see that 31 is not equal to 39. So this is not a solution. Checking our second one. Again, we have 4m plus 9 equals 33, and we're assigned the value of 6 for m. So start by substituting in 4 times 6, again I place that in parentheses, plus 9 
equals 33, and we're questioning if this is true. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 9. We're checking to see if this is equal to 33. And we come out with 33 on the left, 33 on the right. So that means 6 is the solution to this equation. Some values on open equations will make it true, some will make it false. So we have to check to see is this a given solution for the open equation provided. Along with using given values, we can use estimation or mental math in order to check. And we can do these mostly with simple one-step equations, which we'll study later in our look at Algebra 1. But if I look at the equations here, so use your knowledge of how math and numbers work to figure the solutions of simple open equations. 5k equals 15. Well, if you know your multiples of 5, what would you multiply 5 by to get 15? And a quick look at that, we know that 5 times 3 equals 15. So 3 would be the solution to this open equation. Next one, 16 minus r equals 9. What do I subtract from 16 in order to get 9? And we would conclude that r would have to equal 7. After that, s plus 6 equals 34. So what number plus 6 would give us 34? We would have s equaling 28. And last, b divided by 7 is 8. So what number can I divide by 7 to get 8? We would conclude that b is 56. Now I walk through these rather quickly, but a lot of people by the time they get to the Algebra 1 level are still struggling on knowing their 100 basic addition, 100 subtraction, 100 multiplication, and 100 division facts that you should have learned in elementary school. So if you are somebody who's rusty on that, please take some time to each day to study and get caught up on these basic pieces of information. It will be immensely helpful moving forward through math. So aside from being provided a value to check for an open equation or using mental math from the basic facts that hopefully you are well familiar with, how else can we informally check for solutions to a, an open equation? Well, two methods that are good are tables and estimation. Now, a table can be something as simple as a t-chart, where we put in assigned values for w, we do our computation, and then we come out with a final answer. And then we would know if it's true or false. So there's a little bit of overlap here between these two, but let's look first at tables. So what values can I assume for w in order to try and solve this equation. Let's start with something like 4. If w equals 4, then we have 8 times 4 plus 3. Doing our math, 8 times 4 is 32, plus 3 is 35. So we came out with a number that was too small. Next, try another number, but don't randomly guess. Pick a number that is larger than 4, because if I went smaller, it would come out smaller. So let's say 8. Well, 8 times 8 plus 3. 8 times 8 is 64, plus 3 is 67. This time I went too large. So 4 was too small, 8 was too large. What else could be attempted? How about we try on a 6? It's in the middle. 8 times 6 plus 3, writing our math, 8 times 6 is 48 plus 3 is 51. We now have our solution to this open equation. 
So the table allows us to do try, test, and revise with the ability to keep track of where our results come out and then make estimated or intelligent alterations to what we were trying. Next, how can we do estimation? Okay, so my equation is negative 3x minus 5 is 23. So what properties of numbers are at play here? Well, we have a negative multiplier. We're subtracting from it, and then we come out with a positive answer. The only way I can multiply by a negative and then subtract and come out positive is if I'm multiplying by another negative number. So, we're going to have to be using negatives in our table. Let's start with negative 4. So I have negative 3 times negative 4 minus 5. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. So we came out positive, just not far enough. What if I went to negative 5? I have negative 3 times negative 5 minus 5. First two give me 15, minus 5 is 10. Negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 minus 5 gives me a negative 18. Minus 5 is 13. I'm getting closer. Let's jump up down to negative 8. Negative 3 times negative 8 minus 5 gives me a negative, or sorry, negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24, minus 5 is 19, much closer. Let's try negative 9, negative 3 times negative 9, minus 5, gives me 27, minus 5 is 22, I'm very close now, negative 10, negative 3 times negative 10, minus 5, that's 30, minus 5 is 25. So we have now here a number that falls on either side. So our actual answer in order to get this 23 that we were looking for has to be somewhere between negative 9 and negative 10. And that's where the estimation piece comes in. We don't at this point have an exact answer, but we know it's between negative 9 and negative 10. So when it comes to solving simple equations, we will be developing more concrete ways of doing this. But at this point, using tables to organize our thoughts, estimation if it's not an exact value, as well as substituting in given values to find our intended solutions. So Welcome to an introduction to equations. Be prepared to study a lot more on equations as we go forward in Algebra 1.